Hi, my name is Cameron Risley. I'm Leo Franceschi. And I'm Dan Demon. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the Frontier, Frontier News. News. This week, Maddie and Gabby hit the streams. Uh, cold Open gets toasty. Levi and Nola try something new. Uh, expensive Thrills goes on a shopping spree. And Wyatt sees the future. On Thursday, United States Congress members gathered to sign the Declaration of Independence. One source stated that the mood in the room was far from celebratory. Everyone was aware of the burden they were undertaking. Signing such a document is considered an act of high treason against the British Crown. The transcript will not continue to cover this story as events unfold. In other news, this past Saturday, Commander Neil Armstrong and pilot Buzz Aldrin landed their spaceship on the face of the moon. Hours later, Armstrong became the first ever human to walk on the moon. When asked in an interview what it was like to land on the moon, Buzz said it was, quote, pretty cool. As always, I'm Shiloh Hammerland, and thank you for watching. Hips forward, Levi. There we go. Ah! Y'all ready for this? Many sports at Northampton High School like to advertise their ability to incorporate and teach new players to the game easily. For someone new to a sport, it can be a stressful experience. Meeting new people, trying something you've never done before, along with the pressure to do well and not let the team down. We decided to test out the girls lacrosse team and see just how welcoming they are. Lunges! Oh! Make sure you get your hip flexor lunges. Yeah. What? What did you just say? Hip flexor lunges. Hip. What the f? Oh, Guys, I'm head not head an athlete. Like, yeah. Okay, so basically. This is Charlotte Reeb. 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 It's Reeb. Right, it's Reeb. Um, oh. so, basically, <laughs> so basically, in the game of. Back up. Basically, in the game of women's lacrosse, there are 12 players on a field, including one goalie. Um, there's defense, midfield, and attack. Assuming you guys have that skill set to be equipped to which play today. Um, oh, yeah. Which I'm sure you do because, of course, Nola yeah. is very athletic. Um, yep. She's going to catch oh, wow. it. She's uh, probably going to not drop it. Okay. Yeah, I, got, I got help. I got help. Over here. Nola. Pass the ball. Yeah. Ah. No, hey! No! Oh, unbelievable! Charlotte! Charlotte! Charlotte's on your team! Charlotte! What? Charlotte's on my team? Oh! Yes! <laughs> oh. No! Noah! <laughs> Get out! Get out! You know that I deserve this! After all that I've done for the transcript! I get this ball. No! Oh, hey, yes! No, you got it. What? That's not legal. Oh. You're out of the game. Upon reflection, Levi and I are not the best at girls lacrosse, but the team was very welcoming to us. Thanks so much for watching, and happy April Fool's Day. On March 17th, the Northampton School Committee voted 6-1 to one in favor of keeping the mask mandate in place as per the recommendation of Meredith O'Leary, the City Director of Public Health. Just a week before, the School Committee changed course voting 7-3 in favor of removing the mask mandate after O'Leary's position changed. In a letter addressed to the NPS community dated March 25th, Superintendent Dr. John Provost stated, as we enter this new phase of our response to the pandemic, individuals will make different choices and it is important that those choices are respected. With the mask mandate being lifted this past Monday, we spoke to the students and medical professionals at NHS to get their opinions. I feel that uh, we've come to a new stage in the pandemic and I think um, it's appropriate to be flexible in our approaches. 
to it and recognize that we are in a different place. We have a high vaccination rate. We had a less severe uh, variant in Omicron, uh, but I don't, I worry that people will become complacent and um, I'm especially concerned that people will stop pool testing because it's a silent thing. We don't know uh, if it's around unless we do that kind of surveillance work. I've seen a, a good fair number of people still wearing masks and I've seen a lot of people, I think, being respectful of those who, who for all sorts of reasons, uh, continue to wear their masks. In the health office, we, we do have um, you know, a masking policy inside uh, and uh, I love to see that. I think it was a great change that we made and the science supports it and uh, most of my peers support it as well. And this is a great change for the community and for the school as a whole. I would not say that people are at high risk of getting COVID, but there is still a risk of getting COVID as with all diseases. I don't normally wear my mask, but at certain medical facilities, I still think it's wise. And in certain super crammed places, so if I were to go to like a, a concert, then I would still wear a mask. I am glad that they made the mask mandate optional because like, again, it's still optional if anyone feels uncomfortable not wearing a mask then they still have the option to wear it but I know a lot of people were seeing the decrease in cases and were thinking that they don't have to wear a mask anymore and now it gives the people the option to do what they want to do. I didn't wear a mask yesterday the first day of the mask mandate being lifted and then I got an email saying someone in my class tested positive and so now it puts me at more of a risk I guess so. I think there's still definitely a risk and I think we'll probably see cases rise again. As of the most recent pool testing, update from superintendent, and I just reported no positive cases. Thanks for watching. See you next week. So, um, welcome to Expensive Thrills, where unlike our cheap counterpart, we're actually eating good food. And uh, we're gonna be traveling to Homestead, where uh, hopefully we'll get some delicious cuisine that's over, you know, $100. Welcome to the hall, which is North Hampton. <laughs> so over here, you can see uh, these pillars, which I'm actually funding the refurbishing of. They're ancient Greek pillars. They're gonna get you, Ooh, look at that. There's potential right there. Here we are. Inside Homestead, this uh, beautiful place, very farm sheet and rustic. You can see over here there's all sorts of objects and decanters and beautiful little herbage. Oh, that's straight, that's straight from the, the babbling brook, as they say. I, I love this. Here we have what's quite possibly the world's largest two spoons. Wow, those are magnificent polished spoons. Here, I'm not even sure what this is, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. We have whipped ricotta. Oh, yeah. that's what that is. Wow. Mmm. Just a nice uh, little bit of honey in there to add a little sweet in it. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. He actually owns yeah. the yeah. largest honey farm in America. In America, yeah. Alright guys, so um, we're here with a little decor review here. We got the Rome Col Coliseum in Iceland here. You notice these pillars, very similar inspiration to the ones downtown that I'm actually personally refurbishing with my sugar fund as they say. So here we have the uh, black kale salad, which uh, personally was recommended by by uh, Charlotte, our host, and we're all inquisitively looking at it. So this is a wonderful combination. Uh, we get the leafy greens, and then we get a little nuttiness with those little bits of what seems like nuts, and 
and um, and then we also get this cheese. All right, also the uh, black kale salad, as uh, Liam just talked about, recommended by Charlotte. I have to say, it's a great mix of you know the leafy greens and and other other flavors, but the supplemental. It's so good. Um, it, it's so good. Ten out of ten, the best item on this menu, probably besides the bread and the budino. Follow me, if you will, to the deep dark depths of the ocean, where you find the octopus. Here we go. <laughs> Just scrum de Leonskis. I don't know. It's it's good, but I would recommend not getting this because if you don't like squiggly seafood, there's like a married couple next to us. But um, <laughs> if you don't like seafood, and there, it seems like maybe like some sriracha. First bite of the tiramisu. Mmm. Oh yes. Not too sweet. Beautiful combination. The powdered sugar on top adds a little bit of. You know, to it. <laughs> yeah, this is the budino. We're gonna try a little of that. Oh wow, that's that's just rich. About as rich as we are, to be honest. But like expensive thrills coming back at you. That was a good one. <laughs> so here, in conclusion, we get the check for Homestead, hundred thirty-six dollars. That is not in your mama's piggy bank. Perfect for expensive thrills. It was perfect. A nice variety of Mediterranean Italian cuisine. Just, I mean, it was, it was just wonderful. So as we depart on our private vets to our chateaus at the south of France, we really would love to uh, thank you for joining us for expensive thrills. And, uh, and yeah, I think I got a business call. So see ya. Thanks, Homestead. <laughs> <In the water. laughs> Hi, welcome to Taking It to the Streams. This week we talked to fish. What are streams? What are fish? What are dogs? Well, we're here to tell you. Let's get on it, gang. So the way stream work is they go down the river and then you gotta swim up the river and then you get to the toads and you eat the toads and then after you eat the toads, then you kinda then they go back out of you, and then that's how streams work. We also spoke to local residents living near the stream. Meow. All streams start at a high point, like we all do in our lives. Then we slowly cascade down to one final low point, and then we just kind of keep going from there. And you just gotta get a shovel and keep digging that grave. But let's not talk about that. I'm gonna climb that tree. Are we waiting for Gabby? Oh. Okay, cool, I'll run. Yo, what up everybody? It's your boy, we're going on a run. Let's check our pace. 10 to 17 pace, incredibly slow. Max Hartley, everyone. Take 13. Who the f is this guy? Um.
What are we even filming? There's no way you just said that. Bro, I literally get all the drone shots. Bro, there are no drone shots. This is Dogecoin 2. There are no drone shots. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching and have Happy a April, April Fool's Day. Day. Damn, why do you?